the uh, the bubonic plague, which you probably won't, uh, you now you know what to do. But uh, thankfully, we don't see that much anymore. <clears throat> so, if someone has a cold, uh, you could drink the tea. I find that sucking on a clove is probably a little better because you get more of the oils coming out more constantly as opposed to just drinking it and then it's down and that's it. Uh, and it's benefiting you, but it's not disinfecting the air, whereas if you breathe it out, it's actually disinfecting the air around you. So, uh, Now this is an interesting note uh, about its breath freshening capability. In some Asian cultures, over in Asia, people actually were required to chew on a few cloves to freshen their breath before they were allowed to see the king. So I'll let the mental pictures form there. Uh, <laughs> interesting things that we find when we look into history. History isn't boring. Some history curriculums are, but history isn't boring at all. So, uh, you know. Excuse me, can I uh, get an audience with the president? Okay, but you'll have to chew a few cloves first because he doesn't like your breath. <laughs> Just a funny little quirk that we, we humans can produce. And research actually shows that cloves help the body to use insulin more efficiently. So this is great for diabetics, both type 1, where you're not producing enough insulin, and type 2, where your body isn't using insulin very well. So if you, if you use it more efficiently, you can make better use of what you do have, whether you have a lot and you're not using it, or you don't have enough. Improving your use of it can be really beneficial. So uh, if I had diabetes, I would definitely be taking some cloves along with uh, a number of other herbs and uh, a lot of things. And there's actually some programs that have been shown in some uh, preliminary informal trials to cure and reverse diabetes completely, both types 1 and 2. So I would be doing that as well. But clove would definitely be part of my program. So uh, it's also a powerful antioxidant which helps to prevent macular degeneration by preventing the breakdown of a chemical in the retina of the eye called uh, docosahexanoic acid. I dare you to say that one ten times fast. Docosahexanoic acid. So it'll uh, preserve this stuff in the retina and keep it from degenerating if you're uh, at risk for macular degeneration. And so clove would definitely be part of my program if I was concerned about that as well. And cloves are an excellent vermifuge. That means that they remove parasites from the intestines, worms, and so forth. So if I had worms, I would probably take uh, several cups of clove tea per day, uh, along with uh, all of the other great worm-killing herbs that we know about. But clove would definitely be a big part of them. Uh, clove is actually a great... It's kind of like garlic. It'll destroy almost anything... Uh, living that can hurt you, any foreign organisms that that attack, or actually they don't so much attack as just look for their natural habitat, which is sick tissue. So if you're in a sick state, chances are the germs will find their way to you. And Louis Pasteur actually said uh, a few years after his germ theory was published and accepted by modern medicine, which is uh, when they invented antibiotics, they, they thought it was nuts and just a bunch of malarkey until they had antibiotics that they could sell. And then they said, oh, we love this theory. It's useful to us. It'll help us sell drugs. So let's adopt this theory. But a few years after that, Louis Pasteur actually said, you know what? I don't think the germs are so much causing the disease as just occurring at the same time and place because uh, they like to consume dead, degenerated, sick tissue. They don't consume healthy tissue. Uh, no germ in the world will consume healthy tissue. So uh, this is actually Louis Pasteur, the, uh, the discoverer of the germ theory of medicine. And he's saying that it's not the germ that makes you sick, it's the sick that makes you germy. <laughs> but uh, so definitely, mm -hmm. yeah, the milk is pretty gross these days too, yeah, thanks to pasteurization unfortunately. And uh, he found out a lot about germs. Unfortunately, medicine adopted a lot of the, uh, the things uh, that he suggested early on before he got a chance to really learn about it. And 
uh, make a better decision. So uh, then he said, you know what, I think I need to modify my germ theory. And then the doctors he talked to said, nope, forget it. We like the germ theory as it is. We're just going to leave it like that. 